Hey, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I thought I'd try out all this new technology by um, making a couple of review videos and posting them. So we'll see how all this goes. I'll test it out. So the first one I want to do is really basic, just um, kind of reviewing the difference between a DFA and an NFA. Really fundamental. So let me um, share my screen. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So here's what I want you to do. I have four examples of finite automata, and I want you to just take a second and figure out whether each one of these is a DFA or an NFA, all right? So you decide, DFA or an NFA. Go ahead and pause the video, and then um, we'll go over the answers in just a second. All right, so if you did as I asked, the first one is da -da -da, an NFA. I know this is corny, but hey. Um, and the reason it's an NFA is because we have lambda transitions here, right? Um, you'll also notice that, for instance, the state Q3 has a transition out on an A, but there's no B. Um, and the state Q0 doesn't have a transition on an A. Okay, so those are some of the reasons why that is an NFA. Second one, take a look at the second one. This one is an NFA. Again, this one, let's see, if you take a look, state Q0 has a transition on an A and a B, that's fine. Q1, A and a B, good. Q2, A and a B, uh-huh. Q3 kind of looks like a trap state, but look, we didn't trap it. So in order for that one to be a DFA, you would need a transition here. You need to loop on an A or a B, right? So that one is an NFA the way it is. Next one, number three. This one is a DFA. If you take a look at each state, there is one and only one transition on an A and a B. Right, one and only one transition on an A and a B. So that one is deterministic. And then finally, the last one is an NFA. This one is an NFA because Q1 has multiple transitions on an A, but there's no transition on a B. Okay, so that's quick review of what's the difference between an NFA or a DFA. Now, what I really want to do with you is talk about what is it in those really formal definitions of DFA and NFA that tell us about those answers? So here's a quick review about the definitions for a DFA and an NFA. They have these five part definitions, right? It's an ordered five tuple, Q, sigma, delta, Q0, and F. And Q is a set of states, sigma is the input alphabet, Delta is the transition function, Q0 is the start state, and F is the set of final states, right? So that should be familiar to you. Similar for both, the only difference is the transition function delta. So take a look. So delta for a DFA goes from Q cross sigma. So the domain is Q cross sigma and then the range is Q. And then the other part that's important is that this is a total function, a total function, which means that every single ordered pair in Q cross sigma must be mapped to some element in Q, right? So that's the idea of a total function. Then if you look at the NFA, for the NFA, the domain is Q cross sigma union lambda, and then the range is the power set of Q. And this one, it's allowed to be a partial function. So it could be a partial function. Um, technically, you can think of it as a total function, even if there are situations where um, one of the elements is not mapped anywhere, you can think of it as being mapped to the empty set. So in a sense, it's kind of a total function, but we'll just say it's allowed to be a partial function to allow for those situations um, like we had in like Q3, right? So Q3 from the second example on an A, nowhere. So Q3 on an A had nothing, it was mapped to the empty set. So you could think of it as 
some of the elements aren't mapped anywhere, or you could think of it as being mapped to the empty set. Okay. All right, so that's our definition. From that definition, here's what we know. The very first thing you'll notice is in the domain here, Q cross sigma versus in the domain for an NFA, Q cross sigma union lambda. So here's what's really important from that first point is for a DFA, no transitions are allowed. So in a DFA, no lambda transition, sorry, no lambda transitions are allowed, right? So we don't have lambda as part of the domain for a DFA. But in an NFA, lambda transitions are allowed because it's part of the domain. Good? So that's the first observation. In other words, anytime you're looking at the state diagram for a finite automaton, if you see lambda anywhere, it's automatically an NFA. Lambda is only allowed in an NFA. Okay? Then the second part, second big observation is that from each state, for a DFA, there is one and only one transition on each symbol in the input alphabet sigma. The way that we get that observation is two things. First of all, since delta is a total function, like I said, every single ordered pair has to be mapped somewhere. So there is one, and then there's only one because we're, um, the range is just a state, one single state, not a set of states like for an NFA. So for an NFA from each state, there can be any number of transitions on each symbol and sigma or on lambda, right? So since we have the power set, this allows us to map some element, you know, A or a B, it can go to any number. It can go to a set of states. It could go to zero or more. Zero if it's in the empty set, and then more if we happen to have you know, two or three states in that set. And then the other thing I want to point out, the other really important observation is don't forget that lambda is not an input symbol, right? Lambda is never an input symbol. It's not a character. It's a string. It's the empty string, a string with no characters. So when you write out sigma, sigma is just the symbols like A or B. Lambda is never a part of sigma. Lambda is never in the input alphabet sigma. So here's the way I like to think of it visually, is for a DFA, every single state, you have to have one transition on an A and one transition on a B. This is assuming a input alphabet is A, B. So you, if you look at every single state, there has to be one transition on an A and one transition on a B, no more, no less. For an NFA, there's all kinds of things that are allowed. We could have this kind of situation, that would be fine, but you could also have transitions on lambda, you could have no transitions on an A, and you can have multiple transitions on a B. So this is the way I like to think of it. Here's what's allowed for an NFA. For DFA, here's what's required, okay? So that's my first review video. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna go over how to transform an NFA to a DFA. Again, just a, a review video. So we'll take a look at maybe some of these exercises where we can take an NFA and we'll go through that conversion process, converting to a DFA, okay? All right, so we will catch you next time. See you soon.